Snap Judgment Studios. Get a behind-the-scenes look at Comedy Central's The Daily Show on Beyond the Scenes, an original podcast from The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. Every week, host Roy Wood Jr. goes deeper with notable guests and experts from the Emmy Award-winning series, and together, they use comedy to tackle current topics, from gentrification to gun laws, and take a closer look at how and why these topics matter. Listen to Beyond the Scenes from The Daily Show with Trevor Noah on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. New episodes every Tuesday. Attention shoppers, we now have Taste in the Bread Aisle, Dave's Killer Bread. That's right, an organic bread that's no longer a sedative for your taste buds. Dave's Killer Bread is on a mission to make the most of the loaf, to rid the world of GMOs, high fructose corn syrup, and artificial ingredients, and plant the seeds of good in all that they bake. Killer taste, killer texture, always organic. Dave's Killer Bread. Bread Amplified. Odoo is the most popular open source ERP for many reasons. It's affordable, easy to use. However, most companies rely on Odoo because their applications are fully integrated. But wait, what does fully integrated mean? Imagine a mechanic. They don't waste time running around a shop looking for tools. They keep everything they need in one convenient toolbox. Odoo is just like that. But instead of a hammer or a wrench, you get applications for every aspect of your company. They're always connected and communicating with each other, letting you stay up to date at all times. For a free trial, visit odoo.com slash snap. That's O-D-O-O dot com slash snap. I'm 12 years old. So normally I don't care about the news, I always talking that boring stuff. But this morning, when I turn over under the covers and see this snow drift piling against my bedroom window, I run top speed to turn the TV on. And the weatherman is giddy. It's coming down, folks. Be sure to wear that extra layer of long john and stay home if you can, because the roads are treacherous. The screen shifts over to cars, veered to odd angles and ditches. Already school systems are reporting cancellations. Genesee, Byron Center, Zealand, Caledonia, at the Lake Effect Snow in Fentonville says they won't be going to school today, folks. Comstock Park just called it quick. And by now, my brother is sitting next to me on the couch and we suddenly both found our religion praying to Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit to please, 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 say Kentwood. Kentwood, say Kentwood. What was like, Grand Rapids schools, including the East Grand Rapids area, ask all of their students and faculty to stay off the roads today. St. Kentwood. Allendale, Grand Haven, Kelloggsville. Everybody in the world could close their school and we'd still have to go like they want us to slide off the icy roads and die. Hudsonville, they're down for the count. Muskegon called in quits. Holland, Michigan, do I even have to say it? Keep under the blankets nice and warm. And that's it for the school closing today, folks. Bob, the AccuWeather forecast. No. No, 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 no. Well, thank you, Jim. Oh, oh, just a minute, Bob. One last addition to the list. When the Kentwood school system comes in under the wire, you know it must be bad. Hello, Clay. Joy. Joy, 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 joy. The feeling of having to go to school and then not having to go to school on a Wednesday, even... Today, today I weep in memory of this elation, but but my nieces, they tell me, my nieces who live not two miles from where I grew up, they tell me, Uncle Glenn, we don't really get many snow days. What, what, what you mean? Why not? Because there really isn't a lot of snow. No snow. In Michigan? What? Michiganders brave and true, we live for the white stuff. We laugh in the face of blizzards and wind chill temperatures and ice storms. What do you mean, no snow? Well, it turns out what's actually happening, what's really going down, has ramifications far beyond the Great Lakes State. So today on Snap Judgment, we proudly present Dan Ice. 
a journey like no other. My name is Lynn Washington. Bundle up because it's about to get real chilly outside. When you're listening, 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 when
They spent the night in Quebec. The next morning, a gray, windy day in February, they pulled into a parking lot at a port on Prince Edward Island. We unloaded our car, and we loaded it onto this fishing boat. A small, weathered fishing boat that they'd share with a captain, a biologist, and a small crew of fishermen. Who were also, at one point in their life, harp seal hunters. These were the guys who knew how to find the ice and get to the seals. And we headed out into the Gulf looking for the ice. Day one. I see nothing but open water. And I kind of wonder, since this is new to me, are we going to see ice? Jennifer and David had help from a helicopter with the Department of Fisheries and Oceans. They were also trying to find the ice. They would say, okay, we see the ice over here. And then our, our boat would actually head off in that direction. There was that little ice that we literally had to chase the ice. Chase the ice before it melts. So after day one goes by, there's still no ice at all. I mean, blue water. And you could water ski here. I look at David and I say, where the hell's the ice? There's no ice. Another day passed. We have not seen one seal. We have not seen one piece of ice. And the stress is, it's, it's not subtle. You find yourself going snippy or even pretending you didn't hear a question because you're just sinking. You're sinking inside of yourself. Three days. That's more than half of the trip, and we still hadn't found the seals. I'm a chatty Kathy. I talk endlessly. But Jennifer, she found herself dead quiet. I go out on the back of the boat. I just kind of sit there consuming more Diet Coke, not sleeping, and, uh, yeah eating about 10 pounds of uh, prepared raisin and peanut mix. As the sun went down on day three, the crew started to see brash ice, small, floating pieces of flat ice. And then the ice gets heavier, and the ice gets heavier, and our boat begins to move slower. And finally, the boat slipped into the ice pack and stopped. It was evening. That gray blue dusk time and I'm looking out over this ice and I can begin to see the white pups when the engine shut down you hear the mothers and the pups cry and the pups sound very very much like a human baby cry the cries wafted across the ice and it literally is like a symphony Jennifer went to bed early that night, eager to start photographing as the sun rose. She bundled up in her bunk, in the basement of the boat, in the same cramped room as five fishermen. The hum of CPAP machines had rained mighty the past few nights. But here, Jennifer fell asleep to sounds of ice scraping against the fishing boat and pups wailing. You're actually waking up and drifting back off, and they're seeping into your dreams. Jennifer was the first one up the next morning. Her goal, document the surface of the ice. But first, check the gear. You just don't check it. You pull cameras off the chargers. You load batteries. And then you put the cameras inside of the housings. Then you load up batteries into the strobes, and you check the strobes. She put her crampons on, her dry suit, her orange float suit, and then she walked down the gangplank and stepped onto ice, frozen, over thousands of feet of water. She set off, walking towards seals. The herd looks like chocolate sprinkles on, on vanilla ice. Mom seals were sprawled out on the ice with their bright white pups. They're called white coats. I've got a camera backpack on my back and I've got two or three cameras clanking around my neck. I'm walking through hundreds of these white coats that are crying and moving and and sunning themselves. 
Jennifer spent most of the day laying on the ice, slowly crawling around, taking pictures. You never crowd wildlife. You let wildlife approach you on their terms. It took hours for the seals to trust Jennifer, to let her close enough for a photograph. And even then, once she got close, the list of technical challenges was endless. Are your strobes on half power? If they're on full power, you're going to overexpose. You're working in these giant, giant gloves that hit everything and they change your settings by accident. So I'm sitting, mothers coming and going from holes in the ice, coming up and greeting their pups with nose-to-nose kisses of recognition, literally like, Are you my mother? Are you my pup? And I'm watching them nurse their pups, and I'm literally laying on the ice, photographing. The next day, Jennifer had to dive underwater, under the surface of the ice. We want to know more about what's going on in that world. She put her cameras into big housings and prepared to go underwater. The ice is moving fast. So fast that when Jennifer is underwater, Ice blocks could come together overhead and seal her exit without her knowing. She had to be quick and careful. I had no idea what to expect. Trepidatious, nervous, excited. Jennifer slid off the edge of the ice into the water. Beneath a cathedral of ice. It's white. Light is bouncing through it. It's green. It's blue. And then... The sound. What we literally did was drop the hydrophone down a few feet below the ice. It's like you're in a rainforest. There's all this chattering and whoop and squeaks and pops and wee and ah! Oh, click, 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 click. Those are all harp seals. On the surface of the ice, they moved in a very cumbersome, less than elegant manner. Underwater, They are magnificent swimmers that pirouette, twirl, and just move with absolute... Jennifer's story was coming together. She got photos of pups nursing, seals swimming, seals on ice, seals in sunset, seals in sunrise, portraits. And before she knew it... Oh my gosh, we're coming to the end of the assignment here. We only have one more day. And then it was our last day. In Snap Judgment, Thin Ice Returns. Discover exactly where Jennifer's last day on the ice takes her. Stay tuned. Using Talkspace feels a little like having a mental health professional in your pocket. Talkspace offers both therapy and psychiatry. And being able to reach out to a provider anytime, anywhere, makes addressing mental health super easy. And getting started is the most important part. As a listener of this podcast, you'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com. Make sure to use the code JUDGMENT to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's JUDGMENT and Talkspace. Dot com. Welcome back to Snap Judgment, the Thin Ice episode. When last we left, Jennifer had just one more day to wrap up her project with the Harp Seals, only one more day on the ice of the Gulf of St. Lawrence. An acknowledgement, this story does occur in the great outdoors, and Mother Nature is sometimes unkind. Sensitive listeners are advised. Snap Judgment. On Jennifer's last day in the ice, she ditched her scuba. She got into the water with a snorkel so she could linger around the edge of the ice and stick with a seal to photograph. I swim around the edge of an ice floe, and I find my pup. He's a white coat. 
He's got his head in the water, and he's looking for his mama. His eyes are big, and his whiskers are long. And I swim to a polite distance, and I make a photograph of him, and he looks at me. I interpret that look to be, you're not my mama. Well, mom is behind us. I can feel her. She's somersaulting in the water behind me. I turn around, and she's not happy. She comes around the side of me. All I see is her big, beautiful flipper feet go by. She greets her pup nose to nose underwater. Are you my mom? Are you my pup? And once they establish, yes, you're my mom. Yes, you're my pup. She begins to lead the pup away from that piece of ice. I keep an appropriate distance away, a comfortable distance, and she's swimming with her pup. The pups Jen had seen so far had all been on top of the ice. Underwater moments, mother and pups, are very rare. And I'm photographing, and he kept looking, and he kept looking, and he was swimming and looking, and he kept trying to swim over towards me. He would lean, and he'd try to paddle over towards me. He's so plump with all that butter fat. He's a floating little cork. But he's trying to come and see me, and Mom will have none of it. Literally uses her front flipper to physically restrain him. We're just going to keep swimming. And he keeps getting curious and curious, and we're now swimming for a few yards and more time and more minutes, and I'm photographing. The mother starts to get comfortable and the pup gets closer to me, and mom's watching, and she drops down a little below him in the water and is looking up at him. And then he, he senses that I'm something solid, and he can climb onto me. So he has gotten enough purchase on my elbow where he's climbed up onto my chest, and I have become a human raft to this pup. The pup is now completely on my chest. He's, he's not tiny. Jennifer's camera was dangling off her hand with a lanyard over thousands of feet of water. And he starts to do this nose-to-nose recognition to my mask. The mother is looking at me, looking into my eyes, just cautiously observing I'm concerned about her. She's concerned about me. My heart is beating fast. And then he rolls off. He swims over to his mother. The mother checks him out from stem to stern. She's sniffing him from the tip of his nose to the tip of his flipper. She's reassuring him. She's checking him. I'm photographing like a maniac. And then I feel a nip on my left ankle. And then I feel a nip on my right ankle. And I look down beneath me. There were about 20 male harp seals. Swimming in these lazy circles below me. Jennifer kept shooting. I'm vertical in the water with my camera up and I'm shooting the mother and pup. Before I knew it, I felt claws. And there was this sound of fur meets rubber. Rubber being my mask and the hood, a male, this 300, 400 pound male harp seal was literally scrabbling up the back of my waterproof dry suit. He did it so fast and then literally went over my head, submerged me, and I feel myself pulled down. And I remember seeing his flippers go by my 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 eyes, but now my mask is off and it's blurry as heck because you can't see in seawater. I see my mask just dropping below me. So I duck dive to get it and I get it with my finger with this fat blue glove on and I get the thing squished back on my face, try to get some seawater out. I can see this male harp seal who has now turned around. He's about 10 or 15 feet away from me and he is Well, he's regarding me, just 
in a moment of a stare down. And that's when I felt this swell. I sensed it, I felt it. And it was that female going by. It was the mom seal. She slammed down toward the male. She had, was blowing bubbles and, and bubbles were, she was leaving this trail of bubbles that had formed along her skin. She looked like a silver streak underwater. And she got to the male and she just hit him. She just pummeled into him underwater. There was a, a flurry and bubbles and mucus and both of them turning and, and cartwheeling. The pup came over to my side and we're watching this together side by side, both peering down at this battle. And she beat the crap out of the male. He just swam off. And the mother stopped, and she just kind of hung in this suspension, and then slowly she rose. She was blowing these really big bubbles, I don't know, softball-sized bubbles. I was within shoulder, like six inches from the pup. She came between myself and the pup, and kind of pushed the pup over a bit, and began checking the pup out again nose to nose, and then she probably did 10 360s around that pup to make sure the pup was okay. Sniffing, looking, feeling, bumping. Are you good? And again, I was shooting again like a maniac, just trying to get the best picture I can. It was sensory overload, but I was still shooting, not really knowing what I was shooting, but trying to shoot. And then... The mom seal started to move the pup through the water. She lay on her side a bit, and she was nudging him out of the center of this open water towards the edge of the ice. And then she stops. And I watch, and she comes back to me. She circles around behind me, and she starts to do the same thing. She uses her head and she nudges me in the back and she uses her flipper and she's kind of like you would nudge somebody with your shoulder. The mom seal was propelling her pup and Jennifer toward the surface of the water, toward ice. She nudges the pup, she nudges me, and then she nudges the pup and she nudges me. I see where she's going. It's an opening between two pieces of ice about the width of a door. I can't go there. Those pieces of ice come together and you cannot keep them apart. It is not a safe place. So I duck out. I watch as she goes out of sight. I am actually shaking so hard that I can't separate how much is cold how much is excitement? I can't. My hands won't even respond to what I'm asking them to do. So I go to the edge of the ice, and as I'm unbuckling my weight belt, a male harp seal comes from beneath the edge of the ice, and he bites me square in the groin. Bang! And he lets go. And then he bites me square on the thigh. Bang! And he lets go. Jennifer sort of blocked the next moment from her memory. What she knows is that she somehow managed, by way of adrenaline or fear, to lift herself out of the water like a rocket and onto the edge of the ice with her gear and her weight belt. I pick up my camera. I hear our boat blow its horn. She looked down. The mom seal and pup were out of sight. The fishing boat was pulling up by her pad of ice. Jennifer put weight on her right leg. I realize, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, that hurts. And she limped back to the boat. I walked up the gangplank as sturdy as I could without showing any kind of, you know, weakness or injury. I put the cameras down in the galley. I go down the ladder into the bunk room. I began to get all this heavy dry suit underwear off and I look down at my leg and I see this three inch gash 
The male seal had bit through Jennifer's inch-thick dry suit and moved his teeth across her skin. She didn't need stitches, though. The dry suit had saved her. Jennifer covered her wound with a butterfly bandage. And I sit on the edge of the bed. I sank my, my elbows onto my knees and I put my head between my knees. I couldn't fully process what had just happened. I couldn't fully process it. I didn't even tell anybody what happened. Upstairs, the captain cranked the engines. A storm was coming. The wind roared, our boat pitched. I thought it was a normal storm. I, we were packing up gear and there was 13 cases spread out all over the galley. And I remember them kind of going back and forth, sliding across the galley and we're doing our best. And, and it was a heck of a ride. When the boat got back to Prince Edward Island, where Jennifer and David's car was, the captain didn't even take time to tie it up. He needed to unload the boat quickly and then get back to the Magdalen Islands where the boat would be safe. Cases are flying off the boat onto the asphalt. The wind is whipping. It's, you know, the waves are crashing up over the side of the dock. It's a mess. Jennifer went to find her guide, Mario. She thanked him and said goodbye. And he said, we've just heard from the Department of Fisheries and Oceans that the ice pack has broken apart. What did you say? And he said, the ice broke apart. I said, our ice? Yes, the ice pack broke apart. He said, we have to go, Jennifer. We have to get you off the boat. We have to go. We have to go. And I said, what does that mean? And he said, it, it, the ice broke apart. The seals are gone. What seals are gone? They're gone. When you begin to understand they're gone dead. Dead is dead. Dead is gone. The first thing you think of is, are some old enough to swim? Can some, can some make it? You're forgetting that it turns that ice into a blender. Biologically, their ice nursery turns into a blender. Thousands of seal pups thrown in the water, crushed by ice, looking for their mothers. Mothers trying to find their pups. And so all so all the seals had died. Yes. The, the seal you were just swimming with. Yes. The the pup and the mom. That yes, hours before. The storm came through, demolished the ice pack, and there was nearly a hundred percent mortality in the Gulf that year. It still it still strikes. It it's uh it's like being hit by a hammer. It was like being hit by a hammer. Jennifer got into the car with David. She was quiet. I was still trying to absorb what happened only hours before in the ice with this mother and pup. I knew instantaneously that this had become a part of me almost on a molecular level. I used to be anxious underwater. I was anxious to photograph, and I was equally anxious to get out and look at that card on the computer to see what I got. I couldn't think about anything other than the photograph. And now, especially in the ice, I linger. I take the time. Now, when Jennifer goes beneath the ice, she stops. She looks around. She takes pictures of things like light. And the harp seals made me very, 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 very aware of the unpredictability. You can never go back to what was. And I, I try to stay as long as I can where I am. I stop. I listen. I shut my eyes. And I try to let what is going on in front of me be a part of who and what I am. And I can't explain it, but it started on the sea ice with the harp seals. So yeah, 
It has changed me. Full disclosure, I'm a realist. I'm, I'm a trained biologist and scientist and spent years studying sturgeon and doing research. And I've always been wary of these stories that you see where it might end with, the dolphin saved me from peril. I know why the males nipped my ankle and came up over my back and bit me. I was with his potential mate. The female coming back, leaving her pup and assisting me and pushing me through the water to the edge of safety. I don't know why she did that. I let it be what it is. Jennifer has gone back to document harp seals every winter since 2011 to capture the bonding between mothers and pups and see if the ice will hold up long enough for the pups to mature and learn to swim on their own. Often it does not. The trend is thinning to weak ice. The Department of Fisheries and Oceans called 2020 a catastrophic year for harp seals. 2020, this past year, over half of the seals we lost. Thank you, Jennifer, for sharing your story with the SNAP. Special thanks as well to Jennifer's guide, Mario Sear, and to her husband, David Dubelay. You can find Jennifer and David's stunning photographs of harp seals in National Geographic magazine or on their website, Undersea Images Inc. Dot com. Or on Jennifer's Instagram, you have to see this. We're going to have links on our website, snapjudgment.org. The original score for this story was by Renzo Gorio. It was produced by Shana Sheely. Yes, 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 it happened again. If you're looking for more stories, more stories you shall have. The Snap Stories of your dreams, they await on the amazing Snap Judgment podcast. Subscribe because someone's story might change your life. I know it's changed mine. And it's a new year where you can find new Snap t-shirts and Snap stuff at Snap Judgment to the ORG. Snap is brought to you by the team that knows there's something running around those dark woods. We suspect... It might just be the Uber producer, Mr. Mark Ristich, Pat Mercedes Miller, Anna Sussman, Renzo Gorio, John Fasile, Shana Sheely, Marissa Dodge, Nika Singh, Teo Ducat, Leon Morimoto, Flo Wiley, Nancy Lopez, and Regina Bediaco. Well, this is not the news. No way is this the news. In fact, if you're on a special trip, all by yourself, camping in the woods for a month like you've always wanted. No one around, no one gonna see you. Let your hair, your beard grow out like Mother Nature intended, only to return to civilization. To learn people on next door swear they've seen Bigfoot and they've posted a snapshot of your face as proof. All that and you would still, still, not be as far away from the news as this is. But this is. P R X. If you run your own company, then you need Odoo. Odoo is an affordable all in one management software built to increase the efficiency and productivity of any business, regardless of size, budget, or industry. With Odoo's massive library of fully integrated applications, you can control every aspect of your company from anywhere, at any time. So ditch that old, outdated software and get more done in less time with Odoo. For a free trial, go to odoo.com slash snap. That's O-D-O-O dot com slash snap.